Welcome to this introduction to solar electricity. We'll start by describing the two different kinds of electricity and then we'll see how electricity is measured. Next we'll explore simple electric circuits and learn how to use the sun's energy to power these circuits. Finally we'll find out how to wire electric circuits to increase power. Let's get started. We use two different kinds of electricity, DC electricity and AC electricity. Batteries and solar panels supply direct current or DC electricity. The electricity we get from the electric utility in our homes is called alternating current or AC electricity. AC electricity flows in one direction through the wires and then changes direction and flows the other way. AC electricity changes direction 60 times every second. DC electricity always flows in only one direction from the source of the electricity through the device being powered and then back to the source. Now let's look at simple systems for using DC electricity. These electrical systems are called DC circuits. A flashlight is a simple DC circuit that you're probably familiar with. Let's look inside a flashlight and see what's going on. Like all simple DC circuits, flashlights have several main elements. The first is the voltage source, in this case one or more batteries. Electricity flows from the batteries through the load. A load is anything that uses electricity in a circuit. In a flashlight, the load is the light bulb. From the light bulb, the electricity flows back to the batteries through what's called conductors. In a flashlight, the conductors are metal wires or ribbons. To control the flow of electricity, we use a switch to break or open the circuit. Instead of batteries, we can use solar cells or solar panels to power DC circuits. The scientific name for solar cells is photovoltaic cells. Photo means light, and voltaic has to do with volts or voltage. So what is voltage? What does this word really mean? Voltage is the force, or pressure, pushing an electric current through a wire. Voltage pushes electricity through a circuit. Imagine you're stopping the flow of water through a garden hose by holding your thumb tightly on the end. You can feel the pressure of the water trying to push your thumb off the end of the hose. This pressure, this water pressure, is similar to the pressure that pushes electricity through a wire. And your thumb is like the switch in a circuit. When you let go, you let the current of water flow, just like flipping a switch lets electricity flow. So remember, voltage is measured in volts. Volts measure electrical pressure. We now know that voltage pushes current. But what exactly is this current we're talking about? Well, we're used to a different type of current in our lives, the current in a river, the current of water, and that current is a stream of many, many drops of water. An electric current is a stream of many, many particles of electricity. Remember, everything in the world is made of incredibly tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are so small you can't even see them with a standard microscope. And atoms themselves are made of even smaller particles, some of which are called electrons. Electrons are particles of electricity. Electrons have a negative electrical charge, and they orbit the center of the atom, which is called the nucleus. The nucleus has a positive charge, so we have negatively charged electrons orbiting a positively charged center. The negative and positive charges in this atom balance each other out, and the atom has no electrical charge. However, sunlight can actually knock electrons out of their orbit around the center of the atom. To understand how this works, we need to know that light itself is made of particles. Particles of light are called photons. When photons hit electrons, they give the electron some of their energy. If they give the electron enough energy, it leaves its orbit around the nucleus of the atom. Now we have two free charged particles, the negatively charged electron and the positively charged nucleus. Because positive and negative electric charges are attracted to each other, they'll try to recombine to make an atom. But if they're in a solar cell, the design of the cell forces the electrons to flow through wires connecting the front and back of the cell. This flow of electrons through a wire is what we call electricity. So how do we measure this current of electrons moving through a wire? What unit of measure do we use? Amperes. Amperes, also called amps, measure the number of moving electrons. The number of electrons measured by one amp is about six billion 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 electrons. This is also called six quintillion. Six quintillion electrons moving past a point in a wire in one second is equal to one ampere. All right, we have a force measured in volts pushing a current of electrons measured in amps, and this gives us energy. Energy can be harnessed to do work, 
like spinning a turbine in a hydroelectric dam. Work is an activity like moving something, heating something, or powering something. Work changes one form of energy to another form of energy. There are several different forms of energy. Movement, something moving, is one form of energy. The movement of water, for example, can work to turn a generator in a hydroelectric dam and generate electricity. The energy of the moving water is changed or converted by the generator into electrical energy. Electrical energy can also be changed into other forms, like light energy or heat. A light bulb works by converting electrical energy into the energy of light and heat. A solar cell changes the energy of sunlight into electrical energy. This electrical energy can power a motor and be converted into movement energy. There's one more electrical term we need to know. We need to be able to measure how fast we're using electricity. A speedometer in a car measures how fast we're moving in miles per hour. We need a way to measure how fast we're using electricity. In other words, we need to know how fast we're converting electrical energy into another form of energy. Look at these two light bulbs. The small light bulb uses less electricity than the big light bulb. You could also say that the small bulb uses electricity more slowly than the big bulb. The big light bulb uses electricity twice as fast as the small light bulb. What we're really talking about is how fast the light bulbs are converting electricity into light. We need a word that measures how fast they're doing this. That word is watt. The small light bulb uses electricity at a rate of 50 watts. The big bulb uses electricity at a rate of 100 watts. Watts measure how fast electricity is used. Watts measure how quickly we convert electricity into other forms of energy, like light or heat. Watts also measure how fast electricity is generated. Just like there can be a 50-watt light bulb, there can be a 50-watt solar panel. The 50-watt light bulb converts electricity into light at a speed of 50 watts. The 50-watt solar panel does just the opposite. It converts sunlight into electricity at a speed of 50 watts. Watts is like miles per hour, but it has the per hour built in. A watt equals an amount of energy converted per second. Watts measure how quickly we convert energy, how fast we produce or use electricity. Okay, now we can look at how to build basic electric circuits or basic DC circuits. Let's see what happens in this circuit with a light bulb, a switch, and a battery. The battery is the voltage source. It tries to push a current of electrons through the circuit to light the bulb. But the switch is open or off so no current flows. If we throw the switch and close the circuit, the current flows and the bulb lights up. This is sort of like what happens with a water system. Say we had a tank of water with a pipe coming out the bottom. There's a faucet on the pipe that acts like a switch. The pressure or weight of the water tries to push it through the pipe, and when we open the faucet, the current of water flows through the pipe and sprays out on a water wheel, which causes it to turn. This water pressure is like voltage or electrical pressure. The current of water is like the current of electrons, and the water wheel is like the light bulb. It uses the energy of the current. We could use a solar cell as a voltage source instead of a battery. In this circuit, the solar cell is attached to a small motor that has a fan attached. The motor is the load. The wires conduct the current, and the solar cell provides the voltage that pushes the electrons through the circuit. Notice that the wires are color-coded to show their electrical charge. Red wires are positive, black wires are negative. Let's think about our water system again. What if we needed more energy to make the wheel spin faster? We could double the height of the tank. This would double the weight of the water and increase the pressure pushing the current through the pipe. This increased pressure could spin the wheel faster. We could do a similar thing with the battery system. We could connect two batteries together end to end. If we connect the positive end of one battery to the negative end of the other, the voltage produced by the batteries is added together. This extra electrical pressure would make the light bulb burn brighter. This type of wiring is called series wiring because the batteries are connected in a series, one after the other. Here's how this circuit would look with solar cells as the voltage source. By connecting the red wire from one cell to the black wire of the next, the voltage of the two cells is added together. The cells are connected in a series, one after the other, like a string. We've just learned how to use series wiring to increase the voltage or pressure pushing electricity through a circuit. Sometimes, however, we need to increase the current, the actual number of electrons moving through the wires, and keep the voltage the same. To do this, we use parallel wiring. In parallel wiring, we connect the positive ends of both batteries together, and we connect the negative ends of both batteries together. Now, instead of the electricity flowing in a series from one battery through the next, 
there are two sets of wires from each battery connecting it to the load. In parallel wiring, the currents produced by the batteries are added together, but the voltage remains the same. Here's how this looks when we use solar cells instead of batteries. The red or positive wires are connected together on one wire leading to the load, the small motor and fan. Then the black or negative wires are connected to the other lead to the motor. By connecting the positive wires together and the negative wires together, we've created a parallel circuit and the currents produced by the solar cells are added together. The voltage in the circuit, however, is only as much as one cell can produce. This concludes our introduction to solar electricity. If you'd like to learn more about the amazing world of photovoltaics, please visit our website at www.solarschoolhouse.org. Best of luck, and have a sunny day. Mm -hmm.